Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're going to do um, a bunch of little just early spring work here in the berm and we're really going to be focusing kind of on this bottom end of the nursery side. So what we're going to do today is we are going to prune my smoke bush. I have never pruned a smoke bush before so we're going to talk about why you need to prune the, your smoke bush and then we are going to uh, talk about we talk about messes and successes here. So one of our messes was that we lost quite a few echinacea over the winter so we are going to replace those with a different perennial so we're going to talk about that and we are also going to go ahead and fertilize fertilizing your trees your shrubs your perennials as we come um, out of winter and into spring is really really important we are going to do that as well so we've got a lot of different kind of multifaceted things to do a typical morning in the garden for a gardener for sure of course we are in North Carolina, a zone 8A, and we are in the berm. This is the privacy berm, of course, that separates the nursery side from the house. We are on the nursery side. If you come to visit us Wednesday through Saturday, we would love for you to explore this nursery side of the berm. Come walk it, take pictures, explore, have fun, and then you can look at the house side just over through the fence. I do have a um, Winecraft Gold smoke bush here and uh, our friends at Spring Meadow Nursery, which is of course the home to all of the Proven Winners Color Choice shrubs, sent us a great selection of shrubs to put into the berm when we installed it uh, not even 18 months ago. This Winecraft Gold was the first smoke bush that I have ever grown and it loves its spot. It is a very, very happy, uh, well-growing smoke bush and I was really pleased with how it is growing. It has a very upright, multi-stemmed um, approach to it, but we do need to go ahead and prune it. Basically the reason that I am going to prune this smoke bush is because I want it to branch out. Now I'm just going to be completely honest, right? If you're on this earth, you are still learning. As gardeners, we are still learning. Um, you discover new plants, you don't know what to do with them, you think you're doing great, and it is, um, but we're always learning. So we always have to be open to learn new things. I was perusing through uh, YouTube and I subscribe to the uh, Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs YouTube channel, which is fantastic. You need to do that if you are not uh, a part of that community. They have great information on growing shrubs all over the country. I highly recommend it. I was watching a video by Stacy um, from the uh, Spring Meadow Nursery and she was talking about why you need to prune your smoke bush. And she goes in, it's like a four minute video about why it's important to go ahead and prune your smoke bush. Um, and again, essentially I want it to branch out. While it does have a beautiful structure to it, it is going straight up. And the stems that you notice are, they are just completely very vertical and they are not branching out. By pruning it, these stems are going to branch out. I think she calls them like firecracker stems because they're just going to get really, really full. I know that because smoke bushes bloom on old growth and I am pruning this here at the beginning of April, I am therefore cutting off my blooms for this season. That is okay with me. I am thinking long term. It is still going to flush out and be gorgeous in its chartreuse leaves and be stunning. However, I do want this to branch out because I have got three summerific holy grails around it and I don't want this to be this massive tree. I want it to be nice and full. So it is very simple. Like just about anything else that we are pruning as far as a shrub, just like we do with hydrangeas, you're going to go wherever it is that you want the plant to start branching out that's where we're going to cut it and we're going to cut it above where we see some little leaf nodes. The good thing about doing it kind of this time of year is I can clearly see where my leaf nodes are so I can go ahead and prune it. Now I'm thinking that I want it to start branching out kind of low. And again, you can always cut more off. You can't add it back on. So we're going to start about right there. It's still a good three, three and a half feet tall. And then we're just going to get lots of branches. So what I'm going to do is just go around 
and all of my tall stems, I'm going to keep them at this level. And then as we move on to the outer edges, the ones that are shorter, just cut it at a place that makes sense so that the whole plant has nice structure. It is as simple as that. friends so it's really easy right easy as that we got the smoke bush pruned back a little bit so it'll get nice and branched out and really thick i should not have to prune these specific limbs again um, next year so we should get flowers on these stems the course that i just pruned however as this plant grows, it could easily send up some new shoots. And I see some that are already small at the base. We're just gonna leave those alone. So th again, this time next year, probably a little earlier now that I know what I'm supposed to do is that I will come in and just prune those specific ones. Those that have kind of the firecracker, the branching going on, I will leave those alone. And then any ones that are just like straight shoots, I will prune that. I want this to be nice and thick and full. Uh, the color is just unbelievable. Absolutely love this plant. I was blown away with how great it did last year being the first year. This flower bed is on irrigation. There is drip irrigation running through here. You might see some of the brown tubing. As far as sun, this is considered a full sun flower bed because even though it's a cloudy day today. Um, it is a full sun flower bed, but it does get the shade first in the afternoon. Probably around like four o'clock in the heat of the summer, this part of the flower bed begins to get in the shade and then the shade works its way up. At the top of the berm is the hottest uh, because it gets that really intense hot afternoon sun. So smoke bush is done and then we're going to go ahead and plant some more perennials. Now in this area, I did not have any perennials that I lost. I've got some echinacea right here behind me. It has come back really well. I have got the Princess Bride Eucomus right below me. Those are three of those. They are just poking their little heads up. So I'm really happy about that. This is one of those perennials that I was just really on the fence about. And uh, Kata, our friend from Walter's Gardens was like, Jenny, this is the best plant ever. I'm like, okay, she's never led me wrong. So I'm just gonna wait and see how it does planted it last year. It didn't bloom first year, totally normal. Uh, so we'll see how it does this year. So those three have come back really well. And then y'all cannot believe this, but the three summerific holy grails that are behind this Winecraft gold are already starting to come up. Now, your summerifics are some of the last things to pop up out of the garden. However, I have found in our gardens and in this area, the Holy Grail seems to be the first one to come back. I've got multiple other summerifics in other parts of the garden and I see no signs of life, which is completely normal. However, the summerific Holy Grail, it is starting to put out some new growth. So there you go. We are going to be adding three of the silver lining artemisia. This is new from Proven Winners. It is a beautiful silver foliage only perennial uh, that is nice and mounding. It is that artemisia that needs, of course, the full sun. Artemisias need nice full sun. This is only going to get 12 to 16 inches tall, but it's going to get nice and wide. The difference in the silver uh, lining as opposed to other artemisias maybe that you're familiar with is Traditional artemisias can be quite pesky in the fact of as they um, go out, they will start to root. So when it's time to clean up the plant, it is really um, pesky because you've got all these multiple points that the plant has rooted into the ground. Also, it could be slightly, I, I, um, 
not invasive is not the word at all, but just kind of annoying in the way that it spreads. Silver mount, uh, lining does not do that. It only has the main roots at the crown of the plant. So when it's time in the late fall, early winter to come in here and clean the plant up, you literally can pick up all the foliage and trim it back. It is great. It is an extremely well-behaved plant that is hardy in zones four to nine. I have some at the top of the berm and it is at absolutely beautiful and nice and mounted. So this will kind of echo that silver that's at the top of the berm down here. And then of course, the color contrast between the Winecraft Gold and the Holy Grails, and then the Eucomus is going to be beautiful. This is has really broadly dissected silver leaves um, that really give me a beautiful show from late winter. It says spring, for, but for me it was late winter because mine have been popping up all the way through a hard, hard freeze, which could, for me, mine started looking bad in like late November. So you're talking about the big bang for your buck. So we're gonna get these in the ground. Of course, I have got my biotone. I have got my power planter auger. We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna pop down here below the North Poles and we're gonna plant some Achillea because that is where I did lose all of the echinacea that were down there. And I'm gonna explain why I lost them and um, why we're gonna put the Achillea down there. my friends I got started on a roll and I just kept on going so we're going to do a little bit of backtracking and I'm going to explain what I did and why I did it okay of course the silver lining it got put in easy peasy I just drilled my hole used that power planter auger that is the Jenny's edition the five inch it works great on grandes quartz gallons and I even did three gallons so did that uh, then I put biotone in the hole bring your soil back bring the mulch yada 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 boom so the three silver linings are in they're going to be really really pretty against all of those other colors going on there then i went ahead and moved on down and i put two of the uh achilles this is the firefly diamond from proven winners of course it is a lovely as you might imagine diamond is a pure white flower Achillea is yarrow, same thing, right? Uh, and this is a, that whole firefly line is just a great, great, low maintenance, easy plant. For me in North Carolina Zone 8A, it is essentially a semi evergreen. Even in the wintertime, I still have a little bit of the green mound, so I know where that plant is. I had echinacea here. I believe it was the uh, butter pecan that was there. 
I lost multiple um, echinaceas throughout my gardens this past winter and the number one culprit would be too much water. Now, was my irrigation running this winter? No, absolutely not. Did we receive tons and tons of rain? Why, yes, yes we did. And even in this area uh, where those butter pecans were planted, it is raised, it's really well draining soil and it can um, flow away. However, you can't fight mother nature and echinacea is notoriously uh, sensitive for us with our clay soil in the winter time because we are so so wet now i had other echinaceas throughout the gardens that did fine but i lost all of these that were here there was only three of them i lost those and then even in the backyard beds i lost some of those as well if you're going to lose plants, this is the time that you're going to discover it, right? If you've lost them over the winter, whether it was, maybe it was too cold for you. Maybe you had too much of a snow load. We don't have to worry about that here. Or maybe it was just too wet. Um, there are just certain things that we can't control as gardeners, right? I have no control over the rain. Two years ago, I had no control over the Arctic blast. It is what it is. Um, and sometimes we lose plants. That's what I tell gardeners when they come to me and they're brand new. I'm like, listen, you're gonna kill a plant. A plant is gonna die in your garden. Just go ahead and know that up front so that way you're not taken back. Um, and frustrated and disappointed when it happens because it is going to happen. I don't care how long you garden, you're going to lose plants. Uh, it is not within our control to control nature. So, you know, something happens, it just leaves room to put in a new plant. I did the two diamonds because I think these are going to be one. I only had two. And then also I think the spacing is perfect because of that. It has a nice blue green kind of a feathery texture to it as far as the foliage. And then those nice upright, really pretty tight white flowers will be really nice against the North Poles. Did the exact same thing. Drilled my hole, put the biotone in, and then just filled back with the native soil and put my mulch around it. Then we moved on to uh, fertilizing. Fertilizing is a really great thing if you can do it in your garden. For me, I fertilize my perennials, my shrubs, and my trees one time a year. And this is when I do it, coming out of winter and going into spring. I'm getting on the edge of being a little late. Hey, but it's better late than never, right? Um, so you really can start when the plants start to wake up. Some of my plants obviously wake up at different times. Go ahead and fertilize them whenever you have the opportunity to be in your garden. I just went ahead and went from the North Poles uh, basically up to the plum tree and got all of those f fertilized. Why do we fertilize? Well, food equals flowers. Food equals growth and very happy, healthy plants. And we want happy, healthy plants as gardeners. I use the Espoma products, all the tones, shall we say, and I probably smell really good right now because the wind's blowing and I am covered in tones. It does have a certain um, odor if you're not familiar with the tone products, but it is great. And as a fellow gardener said, it is the smell of success. So we just go for it. When in doubt, use plant tone. Plant tone for me is what I call the Swiss Army knife. It can do everything. It can do vegetables, it can do flowering annuals, it can do trees, it can do shrubs, it can do perennials. So when in doubt and or if you're only gonna buy one fertilizer, plant tone would be my recommendation for you. If you wanna get more specific and try to be specific per plant, I would really check, like encourage you to check out Espoma's. It has a plant food finder. I will try to remember to link it in the video description and you can just look it up by plant. So I have my North Pole Arborvitaes, which are Thuja's. I looked them up. I was thinking that they would need holly tone. However, they recommended plant tone. So that is what I used. Wasn't sure about my um, smoke bush. Went ahead and did plant tone on that went all the way up and I was like, hmm, barberries. So I got up my phone and looked, lo and behold, barberries like holly tone. So I used holly tone on that. I know that hydrangeas do like rose tone. Yes, the espoma says holly tone. Um, that, if you're trying to get your you know, blue flowers, I go with Spring Meadow, who is of course the home of the Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. They like to use a slow release rose fertilizer. Now, 
I used holly tone, I used plant tone, and I used um, rose tone. And some of those plants were very close to each other. Is it going to be the end of the world if a plant that really needs plant tone got some holly tone? Or a plant that needs holly tone got some rose tone? No, it is not, y'all. It is grace in gardening. It is better to feed the plants and maybe not hit it exactly the way that the plant wants it, um, the exact nutritional needs. No food is some food is better than no food at all. So just, there is grace in gardening. It is okay. Now, do you absolutely have to fertilize this time of year? If your life is kind of crazy right now, y'all, no, it's okay. There were many plants last year that I did not get any fertilizer on. Personally, I know people who are dealing with death in family, cancer scares. They have brand new babies. They can't get out. They don't have the time, energy nor focus to get out in the garden right now and make sure that every plant gets the exact specific fertilizer that they need. No, it is okay. Grace in gardening. If you can feed your plants, that is fantastic. If you can't feed your plants right now, that is okay. Do it when you can. Do it when you remember. Do it when life allows. It is okay. So there were a very productive day here in the garden. It is quite warm and toasty. I tell you, I didn't realize how humid it was going to be today. Otherwise, I would not have worn my hair down. It is giving, giving us a taste of summer. Uh, but don't worry, it's going to go back down to the lows in the 30s in a couple of days. Um, one other little side note, I am sure that some of you probably will have noticed in the video if Britta uh, made it into the camera, which I'm sure she did. Yes, she does have a brace on her back leg. She has been in some pain the past couple, like maybe about a week. So there's a couple of times that she has clearly let me know that she, um, there's something wrong with her foot. And so we went to the vet uh, last week at the end of the week for her well visit. I went ahead and mentioned it to the doctor. Lo and behold, she has a sprained ankle. Did not know that dogs can get sprained ankles, but she definitely has one. And so she is wearing a brace. The vet recommended to wear it basically anytime she's outside for the next month. So you're going to see her new lovely accessory. She's laying right here at my feet. You're going to see her new lovely accessory over the next month. Uh, we put it on. It just arrived this morning and couple of treats that you gave her and she is good to go other than walking a little funny which is completely normal she'll get used to it um, but she is she is handling it like the champion that she is so no fret on that all is well just a little sprained ankle got a little sports injury from running around and all of her shenanigans here in the yard have no clue how she have how it happened but it is what it is and so of course we do not want to have to have surgery on this dog so we're going to wear a brace for the next month all right my friends get out there do a little work in your garden if the weather and time allows we appreciate you y'all have a great day we'll see you in the next video bye friends